It's the Exit 52 podcast, instant analysis, coming to you live on a Thursday night, April 11th, firing this one up around 10.40 p.m. My name is Jake Luke, and I'm joined by Eric Arditi. And Eric, you know, sometimes you got to go back so you can actually move forward. Move Move forward, some people are saying. Mm. Orioles complete the sweep of the Boston Red Sox. Was this, uh, they, have they had a sweep thus far yet this year? Has your uh, two out of three probably sweep? What, how, how, how are we doing the tracker for that? I just updated the tracker. This is the first sweep. Um, and again, it comes after the first series loss. So they're now okay. three and one, three and one in series. So okay. it's, uh, I wonder, it's we gotta get, we gotta get somebody on that. We've got the little Tony Kemp tracker in there and, uh, listening Jackson has, he had some good moments in the series. He had some rough moments in the series. Jackson holiday did, but we're not here to uh, lead the show off with him. Uh, Orioles just completed a resplendent, uh, life affirming victory over the Red Sox nine to four in extra innings, free baseball, Gunnar Henderson with the go ahead home run <laughs> pissed on that one over the monster. And then, uh, Colton Kowser, the moo man, I put it out there on Twitter. We talked about it in the chat. I think it's pretty, uh, obvious that he is the Orioles MVP thus far a uh, couple hits tonight he's doing that kind of Wyndham Clark like just open the stance up power fade just pissing all over the monster mm-hmm. and then uh, that home run to uh, I think maybe center field or short right uh, but just a weird weird game tonight weird weather conditions just continue here throughout April in the mid-Atlantic northeast area um, and it felt like just another one where the bats just took a little while to get going uh, a pretty solid showing from Grayson tonight he had a couple uh, he, he let a couple get through there but Overall, I think he only had maybe what two, three earned runs, two. and then uh, yeah, two, and then a solid showing from the bullpen yet again. So the Orioles, uh, they win this one nine to four. Bizarre, bizarre home run from Anthony Santander. I I don't know what was going on with that. I wasn't even really fully paying attention at that point. I was listening to uh, the No Laying Up live show, recapping the Masters and kind of because I was watching the Nesson feed because mm-hmm. um, I don't have Masson on YouTube TV, but. Um, it kind of it cut back, and then all of a sudden, Tony Taters just hits this like crazy just bullet draw out to short right field there in Fenway. What a weird, weird ballpark! I love it for what it is, but very bizarre. Uh, and that kind of really spoke to it, where that was kind of the one that put him up, I think, by one. And then, uh, yeah, it, it just kind of was. I, I think it was Con- Was it Connor Wong? The yeah. uh, any relation to Colton? I don't Wong? believe so. That's uh, that's Spenny's boy. No, Connor Wong. Um... Yeah, and then he went in at second base, and they were like, yeah, he has like 11 career innings at second base or whatever, and naturally the ball found him, and he bobbled it. Yeah, of course, of course it did. Um, just a, I, I'm not one to question Providence, and that was definitely one of those moments, but uh, I don't know. We're, we're here to talk about the series, but this this game kind of felt like the capstone on it, felt like something breaking wide open. It would have been nice to see the bats come alive a little bit earlier and just get a complete game for one side of this team, but overall, they're showing that they're the comeback kids, they're the cardiac kids, and I think it speaks to something very very good and very hopefully good for the future that without the top of the order producing, and I know we got the gunner home run tonight, but still you're, and obviously the Santander homer too, but still it's just your, your one, two, three, four guys that you're expecting to be all stars and you're expecting to uh, be producing a lot more consistently than they are. You didn't quite get that night out of them through the first six innings. And then uh, obviously, like I said, cows are producing a ton and then uh, you you get those two, two homers out there. And it felt like a, a real exclamation point on the series. And one that was good to see, too, because this is a, you know, this Red Sox team, I don't think people were expecting them to be super competitive. They got off to a really hot start here. Now they drop three in a row. They're going to be seven and six. Orioles eight and four. Feels like balance restored a little bit. Yeah, water kind of found its level. Um, And it it was, like you said, a weird series. I don't think the Orioles necessarily won this game. They're really lost. I mean. Their defense is awful. Their their defense is so bad, and it's so weird how contagious it is. Um, but that's that's a story for another. Uh, but again, I'm I'm just looking at the numbers. The top four you talked about. You know, Henderson had the one hit home run. Adley had a hit. Uh, Santander had the 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 home run. And so going back to Santander, so uh, you know, I'm, I follow some people who were at the game and you know, whatever the the double play happens, they go to commercial break, and someone on Twitter, I think it was Steve, who's on the Section 10 podcast with Jared and them, was like, he didn't step on the bag. And I'm like, he's at the game. Like, he, they either made an announcement or something. And Masson, like, came back, and it showed Jackson, and then it took him away again. And then, like, Hmm. 30 seconds later is when they're like, oh, okay, we're back. Here's the first pitch. Oh, Tony's around the pole. So, like, nobody knew what was going on, but 
people were like, was that a replay? Like, when was this that's, game? That's is interesting because that, that, Nesson Net, Net, was Nesson was kind of all over that. They had the good camera angles on it. They were like, yeah, no, this is clearly going to be uh, clearly going to be. Um, he, he's going to be on second and they're going to get another shot at this thing. So yeah, they, they kind of, I don't know, like, I think they do use alternate camera angles because you guys were all over me last night when uh, Westberg uh, homered and then they broke out the dong bong. I didn't see that on the Nesson feed. So I kind of had to rely on you guys and then shoot out my, uh, my video there. Um, so little, little how the sausage is made with that, but yeah, bizarre night. Reese McGuire, uh, your guy who I know you're a big fan of the stuff that he does uh, off the diamond and everything. he, Strikes out, he gets a. I mean, this umpire in the series, too. We got to talk about him. Drek, I think his name is, uh, appropriately named. Uh, it was, um, um, Drekman. He was at third tonight. He was at third tonight, and he got okay. the the one call right was was the um the Westberg foul ball in like the second or third inning. They called a foul ball, and it was by inches. But this guy tonight was it was rehack. It's R E H A K rehack, rack rehack okay. something, but. He was that that pitch to Reese McGuire. I've never seen a pitch be more of a strike than that one. Like yeah. I don't know what he was looking at there, and the the crowd and the, in the extra innings, every pitch except for the one to Mullins was a ball. And these like frat boys from from UMass or whatever, like losing their minds over every pitch. A lot like, of fitted ball caps and t shirts over long sleeve t shirts out there tonight, and chains on the outside of shirts, too. A lot of a little bit of Leo and the departed vibes when he's trying to blend in down in Southie with uh, Kevin Corrigan. Yeah, it was, it was wild. Well, it was again just a wild, wild game. And again, the you said it, and, and they talked about it on the broadcast, the post game, they have 90 comeback wins since the beginning of uh 2022. I don't know if that's good or bad. Obviously, we've seen it, they fall behind early. Again, Grayson was. I didn't think he was great, but he wasn't bad. Like the one ball. If that's like that, if that's his C, if that's his C game, like that's pretty that's good. Fine. And so far with the sample size, like he's pitched a couple of gems so far this year. So if this is kind of the the low end, and maybe we'll get some more ones, I would expect we will. I mean, that's that's a pretty good low end or below average end to have. And he's pitched in two back to back less than stellar weather games. You know, like it was snowing in Pittsburgh. It's cold here. You could see his breath and all that stuff. Um, but so again, he just battled and this is where, um, last year, again, he would kind of, you know, stuff would not go his way in the first inning and it would just unravel. And then it's, it's, you're getting a start of two and a third inning with 55 pitches. And you're like, well, now we have to burn our whole bullpen to, you know, with a full series starting tomorrow. So, can, you know, credit to him for, for really reeling it in. And, and they talked about it on air too. Like Burns does the same thing. We'll kind of give up one early. And then it's like, all right, you guys are getting nothing else the rest of the way. So that's yeah. what they did. I mean, the pitching, even like Irvin last night was really good. Um, he got dicked over by by our guy, um, the awful umpire at home plate. Um, but again, I mean, this this team, it's it's like it's like once the sixth or seventh inning comes, they the bats just come alive. And it's like, yeah, you'd like them to come alive in the first and second, you know, get some stuff going early, but that's just not what they're doing right now. But damn, I don't know, man. They they step up and they hit and they just mash the ball. I mean, Colton's, it's funny because Colton's, the first run was like, not a not a shot by any means. It's a bomb over the monster, but it was, you know, it's it was there. It was in doubt. I was kind of, I was tracking that one all the way. That was not a no doubter like that, uh, that guy on uh, Boston hit. He fucking pissed yeah, on that, that was, one. That one may still be going, but, but yeah, the cows are one. I'm like looking at the, the, the left fielder to see like, how is he playing it? Is he looking straight up? Is he backing up against the wall or something? Um, And then, and then that one, I think the pitch, two or three pitches before Kowser hit the home run, he hung a curveball that stayed high, like right outside the zone. And I was like, yeah. man, I was like, if he could just put a swing on that one, like this could get broken open. And, and he had the one that was ball. like, yeah, I, I, you might be talking about the one that was like right outside of the uh, right outside of the pole. It, it looked like if he had just kind of like had a little more lag on that swing, it would have been uh, would have been he, over the monster as well. He didn't. He didn't swing at this one. He kind. He let it go. It was a ball. It was a high ball. But oh, okay. I was. It was a curveball that just hung up there. And I was like, oh, I was hoping that it was going to break down more and just fall right into it. But again, he. I mean, he smoked that ball. That was like Ted Williams' red seat. You know, whatever bullshit fake story that is. But <laughs> yeah, that was. Um, it's always good to sweep Boston. I think Melanie said their first sweep in Boston since 2021. Um, divisional game. You know, you you got to You want to win these, and and that's a hell of a way to go out there. Um, again, I, the Red Sox team, I don't think they're very good. Like they played well the first week and yeah, it's a fun story and all that, but like, they're not a good team. Um, so this was a, like, this was a must two out of three a sweep would be great, but you needed to win this series and they did it. And now they're coming home and 
hopefully again some nice warm weather and and the bats can get going and and show out for some what should be some fantastic crowds this weekend i'll be at two of the games so i'm I'm really hoping we get good crowds i think we will i know the uh left field upper reserve uh deck is is being open for uh tomorrow's game so breaking news wow hopefully uh jackson uh jackson saves up his uh his hits for these uh for these games yeah, it seems like he had. He looked a little. Uh, I, my brother made the comment to me. He looked like he looked a little wide-eyed out there the first couple mm-hmm. of days. And I think uh, I, I kind of came back to him with the point that like, look, like there is so much shit going on off the diamond for him right now. Like, I mean, he got called up in the middle of that game down in Norfolk at like 9 p.m. He's on the phone with a million people. He's calling Matt Holiday. He's literally he's calling Cal Ripken. Nepkin uh, Nesson had Cal call in tonight, and I was listening oh, to Ma- Nesson had him call in too. So they were okay, double yeah. dipping there. Yeah, he was. Uh, he had a he had a, a booked schedule tonight, but yeah, he was on Nesson, and they're like, yeah, you know, he uh he he had to call me too. I was like, man, like this kid is like he's twenty years old. He's all booked up. He's flying to Boston from Norfolk, probably a red eye. Just gets in there in the morning. He he was talking to reporters yesterday. He's like, yeah, you know, didn't have a lot of sleep, but ultimately he said, look, I I'm not that nervous. I'm more excited than anything, and I think that's a good thing. And my guy Millar, I love I love he's, Millar. What, he's what great. A delight. Yeah, he's such a delight. He was great in the uh, the Nesson booth, and he was kind of drooling all over uh, all over the uh, Orioles' young you know prospects that they have coming up and all their depth and everything. But Jackson, in particular, he had a lot of good stuff to say, and obviously he's close with Matt Holiday, so mm-hmm. telling a lot of good stories about that. But he was like, yeah, like, he's just he's got this certain look in his eyes where there there's a maturity to it. My brother mentioned the wide eyed sort of you know aspect to it as well, which I get because you know he bobbled the one throw to first tonight. He obviously completed it, but there was that. He missed the uh, the tracking the fly ball. I think that was tonight that wound up being the uh, ground rule double. Yeah, uh, that's on Tony. I give that. I yeah, mean, Tony yeah. lost the ball. It's not on. It's not on Santander, but he lost the ball. People were like, "Oh, I knew he couldn't. He he needed help <laughs> with defense." It's like he's in right field, like with his back towards home plate. Like that's an impossible play. Like if Santander ninety ninety eight times out of a hundred catches that ball. No problem. But like people were like, I knew he wasn't ready. I knew it's like he's he's literally 280 feet, 90 feet away from home plate. Like I'd like to know where these people were who knew he weren't ready because it, like the discourse leading up to him being called up. It was uh, it felt like 99 percent were like, this guy is ready. What are we doing? It, that's Twitter for you. That's Twitter for you. But, you know. X, oh, well. But again, he's he's here. He's fine. He does look shaky on defense again. He kind of like his throws are weird. He almost like holds the ball out and then kind of like lunge it. I don't know. It's, it's strange, but in somebody pointed it out, I forget who. And they were like, you know, Elias said he needs work at second. Kind of looks like can, he's I, uh, at second. can I ask you a personal question? No. Okay. Well, I'm going to do it yeah. anyway. You're, you're So you're not the biggest guy, but like everyone, and that's not, not a slight, of course, my short Kings. I love my short Kings, but when did you like, really fill out as a as an adult because for me i feel like it was like 23 yeah it was like it was like mid-20s i think where you just notice you're like oh i feel yeah you're filling out more and yeah so again he's he's long and lanky like he he's looks tall like he's he's kind of slender and like colton's kind of the same way still but he's gonna i mean we saw it with machado you know over and over we saw manny with the like baby shirts and like he was long and wiry and 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 Jackson's kind of the same way, so he's gonna fill out. And he'll be fine, but, but yeah, he's he's literally still a growing boy. Like he's a growing boy. That that's he's all a you growing boy. Say. He's also he's a big strong man, just a, a big expansive man. Um, Nathan yeah. say, Nathan Isaac Bressy uh, giving me the Brock Purdy call out. I that I that's interesting I because that. Brock, yeah, I, I well, I mean, I personally, I, I other people did this too, but I was early on the scene here, uh, comparing Brock Purdy to Lee Harvey Oswald. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Climb up the book depository here and fire off a few takes, I guess, tonight. Well, I have also heard that you're a system podcaster. Oh, come on. That's not fair. You know, you know, I can operate out. I can operate out of structure. I can make all the throws. I, like, I didn't say it. I, Steve Young said it, I think. Um, I think um, Bill Polian was talking about it. So there were a lot of, a lot of people, not me, but but people were saying, I think JLC mentioned it. So... Okay, well then, you know that's that that if anything that bolsters my confidence that uh, I that I can play out a structure a little bit here. Disgusting, disgusting stuff by you. Yeah. Oh well. But no, it, fantastic series. I can't get over that how they responded after um, two straight walk offs in Pittsburgh too. And again, that's everyone was kind of hanging their head. And then the news of Jackson on what was that Monday? Was it Monday night? 
I don't I even it was, remember. It was, it was Tuesday I because they played, they, they played the, they played the they first game night. without him. Yeah, they played the first yeah. game without him on Tuesday. They called him up Tuesday night, and then he was playing on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. And again, now now we, we go into a homestand. I forget who they play after the Brewers. Um, I think it's a decent length homestand, too. I hope so. God, Let's I see, hope Because so. I know they, they play the A's coming up. I may be wrong. Milwaukee. No, I'm sorry. Milwaukee, Minnesota next week, and then they go to KC and LA, and then home for Oakland and New York. So okay. we like yeah, that. Uh, again, if they, it's a winnable series. That's all you have to do is just win these series, and that's what they've been able to do for the majority so far. Again, we would like their um, the uh, the bats to come alive a little sooner. Uh, I know somebody mentioned something about the bullpen. The only the only issue I had tonight was was Mike Bauman and. He gave up the pitch on the first pi- uh, the run on the first pitch, and that was it. So for his, shout out to for him. his standards, I mean, for his standard, that's that's an immaculate ball game right there. I mean, I thought yeah. I, you know, he fired, he he let the one get get you know between him out there into left field there, and I kind of put out the puttering and billowing watch tweet like he's just kind of adrift at sea there. The 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 sails have come untattered, but no, he settled in. I got to give credit where credit's due. Good job yeah. by Mike Tom tonight. And people were asking about Tate. I don't know if Tate is hurt or if they're kind of just kind of limiting him. I mean, that would have been a perfect spot for him. Maybe they just wanted to save him. Um, good time, guy. Tomorrow. We are looking at the comments. Yeah, so f- fire away. If you got a good one, we'll, we'll acknowledge with it. The, with the cow, with the cow uh, picture too. But like um, no, and again, I mean, I mean, you know, say what you want. Danny Colom has been awesome all year. I had someone be like, "Why didn't you? Why didn't you start Cano in the eighth inning?" It's like Danny Colom has not given up a hit all year. Like, what? Why? What are we doing? He was he was disgusting, and then you know he hung one curveball. It happens. He he that guy hit Colton Wong or whatever Connor Wong hit it four hundred feet over the monster. So again, I mean the bullpen. Jacob Webb has been awesome. Um, who's the uh, who's the guy they acquired today for cash considerations from? The oh, Mets? I, I don't know, but but Clem and the Mets fans were shitting all over him. I guess okay. he had like a bad game like two games ago. So they, so they said. Like, I saw it might have been it might have been Connolly or one of these guys was tweeting that he had a good season with the Pirates last year, but three just awful awful games from the Mets so far this year. So maybe the Orioles see something and you know you can get some good. He can eat some relief innings for you. That would be nice. Exactly. And I, again, I saw somebody was like. The new Mets manager is not messing around. Like this guy was here for like 13 minutes and he had a couple bad games and they've already shipped him out. So I don't, I have no clue of anything. If he's going to be minor league depth, if he's going to be a pair, I don't, I don't know. But um, yeah, I, I, you know, it should be a good series. I think it was, who did they say? It's going to be Wells, um, Wells, Kramer. Um, what's his name? Corbin Burns going on Sunday. And then uh, good old friend DL Hall on uh, on Saturday in uh, in Birdland making his uh, return back to Camden Yards. So so no DL tomorrow. One. Then yeah, as, because as... so they they got rained out today, which pushed Freddie Paul to, to tomorrow. And he's a righty, and everyone was like, "Oh, what are they going to do if if DL is starting on Friday? Is it going to start Jackson?" So don't have to worry about that now. So he's facing a righty. He'll get his first hit in a second at bat. Um, we'll be there center for the bar going nuts and, and, and all that good stuff. So hopefully they can, uh, they beat this trick on this is just again, what they did last year. You just keep stacking wins. And, and again, it all comes right after the dong bong comes back. So say whatever you want about it, but I, th- I think it brings the vibes. People are loving it. And again, one was thirsty. So he, he really, really, really wanted to drink out of that tonight. So good for him for, uh, getting hydrated. Yeah, sometimes you got to go back to actually move forward. Um, but yeah, I mean, looking back on the series a little bit, um, just to, to kind of put a bow on it. So that first game, that kind of that really did feel like that complete game, right? Where you get the uh, the seven to one victory, uh, and it was kind of like, all right, we're settling in, things are good here. Uh, Spenny, I see you. Just hang on down there, uh, and then um, <laughs> that's when they call up Jackson, and then you get the uh, the dramatic win uh, yesterday night, and we'll uh, we will pipe in. Yes, uh, forgot about our, West. Our, our, course, our correspondent down in Delray Beach. I'm sure has uh, some things to say after a, a go uh, go ahead shot by his guy tonight. Gunner, I can't believe Tony Kemp went hitless in this series. <laughs> can't believe. Yeah, but he had that sick catch. Hey, a bag on little Tony Kemp. Come on, Tony. The not the not the second baseman went o for o for twelve in this. Michael Elias, what are we doing? What are we doing? Well, the best mm-hmm. part was yesterday. I think the Orioles. Drove it around. Top number one, the number one prospects that they had, I think went one for 13 and they won what, seven to four, seven to five yesterday. Like they had generational guys all go one for 13 and they still won. I mean, where, where, they are, score? where are you? Are you in a sauna right now? 
Are you in a? I think he's in a bunk bed. Oh, okay. I thought he was in a bunk bed. Um, you wrecked my train of thought. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. I'm sure it was well collected, and you had a lot of a lot of just gems to pick. Oh, out. oh, uh, Eric, do you just do you like to just go? Because I did this last night. That's why I'm asking. Isn't it fun, or do you do this? Do you just Google Red Sox after the Orioles beat them, and then just go like look at all the replies to like all their tweets? It's it's yeah. Sometimes I do. So I, I I play uh, I play what's that song? The Dirty Water song. Yeah, I, I actually uh, I had a tweet out. They didn't get a ton of traction. I was hoping it would that I they were drinking the dirty water through the dawn bomb. Oh, highly good. highly good. recommend, and I'll, I'll leave with this. Just wanted to pop in and say that was an awesome series. Colton Kowser, fantastic. Gunner, fantastic. Do yourself a favor tonight, if you're live watching, just go to Twitter, search Red Sox, and just go find some Red Sox fans' tweets. It is pure cinema to get on there and, and just go look at. So that was uh, that was fantastic. Gunner. Well, I was telling him, I, I've been watching. Oh, oh he's, he's already not. dropped out. He's like literally, he's Icarus. He just flies into the sun and just burns up, and, and he's gone. Um, always great to hear from Spenny. Always great insight. And uh, as soon as Gunner put that one over the wall, I, I figured that even though he's on vacation, he's technically not uh, scheduled to appear on these live streams. I, I had a feeling that was going to happen. So here we are. He was. He was. He was always going to come on here. He was always going to. Sorry, I'm Absolutely. picking my my stars of the series right now. Okay, this is tough. This is you want to let's, let's do a little live analysis. Who do who do you got as I, one? I obviously have Colton Cowser number one. I mean, I, I he's carried so not only the, the Orioles. Uh, how, how is it? So is one the best or is three the best? Because I thought three yeah, was the best. One, no, it's one of the best. It's like the star of the game. It's it's star yeah, of the game. Yeah, but it's like the NHL. You, it's like it's like ranking movies. It's like no, uh, it's, it's like first bad. place, second place, third place. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going yeah, cows number one. Little workshop that because I was a little I, that you, you got me all flipped over. Yeah, I keep people on their toes. Um, sorry, cows sorry are to, one. Cows are one. He's killed. He's been murdering my fan. He's I have him on my fantasy team. And every every day I, I text the group chat. I'm like, I can't believe you idiots. Let me draft him. Like you guys are so fucking dumb. Just so mm. stupid. I turned down a trade Aaron Judge for uh, Colton Cowser straight up tonight. So playing for keeps uh, Corbin Burns. Number two. Again, that's that feels like that was a week ago. Like yeah. forgotten about. He gives up the home run in the first to Tyler O'Neill, who 100 percent is on steroids. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen like the pictures of him. He's ju he's just jacked. Who is uh, this? Tyler O'Neill. Um, oh yeah, yeah. He's he's a big strong man. He's, yes, he's, he is. He two fifty, yeah. which is like three ten now, but two fifty like back up then. here. Like he's yeah. he's a big man. Um, and then I don't have a third one yet. I want to go Westberg for the for the 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 what the the big home run last night. I don't know. I mean, I mean, Malcastle that was had a lot of hits. I feel like. He did, yeah. I, I'd probably go Westberg. I mean, that was like, and Westberg, you know, he had the walk off earlier. He's another guy who's just at the bottom of the order, just kind of sneak, just hanging around there. Like he, he's just one of these guys who, and uh, the Nesson guys were talking about it. It's like, you know, you get to the bottom of, of like the order usually, and you're like, oh, okay, we'll see if we can just fan through these guys. And it's like, nope, not with the Orioles. Like it's they're they're pretty deep here. Again, with this lineup that they've now put out twice in a row. Um, it's the second time they've done that, gone back to back. With the, yeah, with lineup. this lineup to specify, with this lineup, not with some with, of the other ones we've seen throughout the year. Yes, that, yeah, yeah. So that one, but it was interesting because I think they said like last year, I think Hyde did it once where he did the same lineup twice in a row and he's already done it twice this year. It's mm -hmm. obviously a little easier when you have got all these guys up and, and are, who are playing like this. But um, he just, Westberg, every time he just hits the ball so hard. I can't, I couldn't believe how far that home run went the other night. Yeah. I mean, that's like he, he doesn't look like a big, strong man. Like he doesn't, you look at him and you're like, he kind of just looks like an average guy. Yeah. He's kind of wiry. He's just, yeah. he looks like me out there a little bit. Yeah. And like, like he just again he, when he, when he gets wood on ball, I mean, that thing goes. So he, he's again, he's going to be a tough guy. If he can be, he can be like a seventh or eighth hitter, six, something like that. Like kind of hide him down there. He he's a weapon. He can, he can absolutely do some damage. I thought uh, Cedric had a, a better series. Um, He's starting to take walks. I don't know why he's not stealing bases more. Yeah. Um, obviously, on the one when he got doubled up, I, I'm like, you go, go. He like, had the oh. one that he had the one that would have been a surefire steal tonight, but it was kind yeah. of a questionable and, call for a ball. So the hit, and yeah, that one. And then he um he did he had the um he tried to steal the the, the base, but it was a hit and run, and Kowser swung at the ball that was four inches from the ground on the outside corner. Um, shout out my guy Kevin down here who was sitting in Matt Holiday's seats. 
um, from last night, and he was just chopping it up with the uh, with the O's all night. He had better seats than Matt Holiday and Ethan tonight. Matt um, Holiday uh, was that his dad sitting to his left? Yes, yeah, it's little, like, uh, little Bush, little, like yeah. Yeah. Little Jebby tonight. He was uh they cut to him and he was the eyes were closed. He was just like kind of in and out. Like that was uh that was something. Little Jebby. I, I like that. I like yeah, that. Kind of lacking um, in energy, but we've also we're trying to start this. Um July 9th is cow appreciation day, and we're trying to get everyone to uh this is my guy Avi. Um we're trying to get everyone to wear like cow suits and cow stuff for cows there. I don't know if they're home or away. That would be I remember great. I tried to I tried to get the eat more chicken thing going. It didn't really take off. I think we probably need to get a Chick-fil-A sponsorship for that. Yeah, that that would be can can major league players get NIL deals? They can just straight up well, get, can just get sponsorship deals. I like No, no, no. We should we should have it still be an NIL deal. We just it needs to okay. be. Um, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, he should still be down in, you know, first grade drinking apple juice. So all these be. guys. Yeah. He should be. Um I'm trying to think what else. Matt Holiday's dad is a mess. <laughs> hey, we we we're no slandering of of Papa Papa Holiday, okay? Yeah, the uh, the 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 paterfamilias of the Holiday family was yeah. uh, he was in a bad way tonight. Here we go. All right, so this is from Rock. Colton Cowser is the first player in Orioles history, age twenty four, younger to record six or more extra base hits and ten RBIs in a three game span. Mm. I mean, he's just, he looks like such just a completely different player than he did last year. Like yeah. you talk about the kind of wide eye that, that Jackson has um, right now. Colton had that last year. This year, no, like that guy knows he belongs and is acting like it. Um, man, he's just, he's going to be a lot of fun. He's already a fan favorite. Like if you saw the, uh, the video of him and Jackson going out and signing the, uh, the monster yeah. today, like. I need I need like a some kind of comedy series with those two. Like I I would I need a podcast from them. They I should need start something. a podcast. Yeah, they should sit there and drink wine together and break down their at bats. That would be great. I would listen. I don't think either that. Well, one of them li- li- literally cannot drink wine. Um, the well, other he, I don't. He, think he literally ever, can. He can't. He literally he can. Well, literally he can. Legally he can't. Right. But that's for another day. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. He just he he looks so comfortable. He's seeing the ball so well right now. So is Mount Castle. He's um, got that look in his eye. And like it it looks different than last year. You're right. Where he looks a little beard. I think it's the beard. It's definitely the beard. He's he grew that out a ton. Um and yeah, man, I remember like we were talking a couple of years ago, like right when he got drafted. It he went to Sam Houston, right? I mean, this is yep. it's not like I, I know Richard Linklater and uh you know <laughs> Glenn Wilson went there together back in the eighties, but other than that, I think they said O'Hearn went there too. Did he? I think I thought I thought somebody had said that. There are some guys because like Richard, not to turn this into a movie podcast, but Richard Linklater made the movie Everybody Wants on, which is an amazing movie that uh, nobody ever saw about a college baseball team uh, sequel to Dazed and Confused. Never heard. Uh, and yeah, Glenn Wilson, who was like a really good like MLB player for like 15 years, was on that team. And he's like in the movie as like a character. Sam Houston State's own, uh, finest. Oh, yeah. Ryan O'Hearn. OK, there we go. What are the chances? What are the chances? But again, just like c- color me shocked that Michael Elias made another great pick, like high up in the draft that nobody liked when it happened and nobody even knew who he was. I didn't know who Colton Cowser was when they drafted him. Like, yeah. I, I'm not the biggest like seam head. I don't pay that much attention to college ball, but like nobody knew who this guy was really, unless you like kind of followed the draft hardcore. But and he's yeah. like, for all the people who talk about tanking, like he's one of the real tanking picks. Like people talk about Adley being a tanking, but he's not really like not, yeah. neither was Grayson that, you know, some and like Kerstad is one Kowser's another Westberg to an extent too. But like, those are the guys that they tanked for Adley. You get, you know, number one after not really tanking. And then you get Gunner in the second and some of these other guys a little bit later. I mean, it's just, it's, you know, that, it's interesting how that works where everyone wants to talk about tanking, but you know, that's, it shows a good eye for drafting. We were talking about this in the group chat the other day, like, for some of the belly aching about Elias, I get it. You know, I don't think he's necessarily one of these like business guys. Eric DaCosta was kind of talking about this the other day on that podcast he did with the Penn State guy, where it's like as a GM, like some guys are contract guys, some guys these days are like analytics guys. But like Eric DaCosta was like, I'm a scout. Like I grew up playing. I want to, you know, I was in coaching to an extent. Like I, I, I think I have an eye for players. I feel like Elias definitely is that too, and he did play, so it makes sense. Hundred percent. Again, the guy just he knows a ball player when he sees it. Like I, I did, there's nothing else to really say. The guy just knows ball players. Again, same thing that draft with, um, Adlane Gunner, Kyle Stowers went in that draft, um, Joey Ortiz, you know, and then again, the, um, the, the Kerstad draft, which was 
my famous, I'll eat my tweet if, if the Orioles don't draft Austin Martin too. They don't draft Austin Martin. They go Heston Kerstad. They also get um, Westberg and Mayo. And it's like, yeah. that's just, it, it's it's just the, the drafting, the player development, it's so next level. Um, and again, it's like you turn on MLB Network and the guys are like, the Orioles player development is out of this world. It is insane. And you're literally seeing the results right in front of your eyes. Tonight is a perfect example. You, again, you got Grayson throwing to Adley. You got Gunner hitting the, the go-ahead home run in the extras. You got Colton, you know, hitting his first two home runs. Oh, by the way, there's another first overall number one prospect at second base. You know, it's it's just it's crazy what they can do. It's really yeah, great. It's, yeah, Sterling, Sterling great. He was he he drafted Carlos Correa under slot again yeah. at number one when no one else thought he would. Like and that was an interesting, interesting regime. If you read Astro Ball, I mean, like, really, like, he, he did draft there really well with uh, Correa and everything. But also, like, you know, they it wasn't all drafting there. Like, they revived George Springer's career. Like, he mm -hmm. was nobody when they brought him in. And then he was kind of the one of the MVPs of that World Series run they made. And then, um, you know, some of those other guys that, that had been sort of puttering around there, too, really, really turned it around. Um, who's my my short king there? I'm, why am I blanking on his name? Altuve? Tony Altuve, Kemp? Yeah. Tony yeah. Kemp was on that team. Uh, little Tony Kemp was on that team. You're right about that. But yeah, Altuve, um, he was another guy who was, they, they kind of just turned things around for him. So this is even like more, this is even deeper. Like they drafted like almost this whole team. Like mm -hmm. Mullins, obviously an exception. O'Hearn they found on the scrap heap. He's one of those these guys they have revived a little bit. So No, M Mullins, Mullins was a pick. Everybody but O'Hearn and was he, there. Mullins he was... was he was an Elias pick? No, 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 not an he Elias pick. Him. He was an Orioles pick. Yeah. yeah. No, but and then like the note going into the launch is something to every player except for Ryan O'Hearn has spent their entire major league career with the Orioles. Obviously, Santander came from Cleveland in the Rule Five, but again, he was a single A player. Like he, you know, and the Orioles grabbed him up, and he's been he's been the best Rule Five pick the Orioles have ever had, and that's Brian Flaherty. Yeah, well, the, the Joey Rickard slander is not going to be tolerated. Yeah. yeah, not a Joey Rickard guy, huh? That, that was the ultimate like buck, right. like try hard, like this, we like our guys, like Joey Rickard. That that was that was a fun couple weeks there, but that was a he very turned. He turned one good April into a three year contract. Yeah, so credit to him. Incredible, to him. Stuff. but uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, t tonight's game was incredible. That was great. This the anytime you sweep someone, it's awesome. Anytime it's the Red Sox, like anytime you just fall, beat the Red Sox, it's awesome. But anytime you can sweep a team, especially on the road, and then it's like, all right, the guys are flying home now. It's going to be a great day tomorrow. Weather's going to be awesome, I think. I know it's only going to rain in the morning, but I don't know. I'm I'm fired up and and I'm I'm fully here for this team, Just absolutely mashing like they are. Yeah, I'm the same. I, like Red Sox fans are kind of annoying, but I do I really do respect the story of their organization where they you know they had the uh, they had the you know curse going on forever and they finally turned it around at the uh, the turn of the century. I, I like Theo Epstein a lot, so respect the story mm -hmm. there. But yeah, it, it is kind of fun to shove it in the uh, the Bradens and the the Cadens from uh, you know Watertown, Massachusetts. You know every well, every chance and, you get. And like the team, their team isn't hateable. Like I like Devers. Yeah. I like I'm um, like. Duran seems fine. Cassius is a little weird, but I like him. But like their players aren't hateable. Like, like, you know, that they used to have hateable players. It, again, for me, it's the fans where I'm like, shut up, you dorks. Like it's but in the the team itself is not hateable. I don't I don't really hate Alex Cora. I don't people like seem to rag on him. I like him. I, I would rather a guy like Alex Cora over Aaron Boone any day. Like, Dude, yeah, I was gonna, literally just gonna say that. Like Alex Cora versus Aaron Boone, like give me give me Cora oh, every you know. single every single day of the week. In a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. But yeah, it just any anytime you beat that that fan base and and really, my shout out the guy in the OJ Simpson thirty two Bills jersey. He knew exactly Dude. what he was doing. <laughs> that was a good eye by you. I didn't see that. That was wild. Uh, God. Well, damn. then he moved. Then he moved down below behind the plate. I don't know if you saw that in extras. It, the, no, go watch the Gunner home run again. He's sitting. He's sitting like four rows up right there, and his jaw is like on the ground. And someone, someone tweeted me, and they were like, "Wow, like tough day for that guy." And I was like, "Yeah, the Gunner home run was the worst news he heard all." Now day. he's got a. Now he's got to board a flight and head out to Brentwood for the the memorial service. That's. I mean, what a, what a tough couple days for this guy in mourning. Yeah, yeah that's uh, not great for him, but I don't know. Awesome series again. It, it's it's slow starts, but man, do they make these games fun in the seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth? And this team, man, they just they score runs. They they you can't give up on them. Um, you, you just can't. You can never really throw in the towel until there's there's three outs in the ninth. But 
they just these guys fuck. They hit this lineup is just they just mashed big, strong, burly men, and then some little right. boys who are still developing, but it's just grown men with tears in their eyes out there. I mean, yeah, wait, yeah, wait, wait, what a resplendent series! Amazing. My mustard of the series, I, I, I mean, I got to go with Colton Cowser just hitting the cover off the ball, just hit you know, putting a little mustard behind that thing and just flying that ball out to uh out over the monster and then obviously uh just you know sending this thing up into the stratosphere with the other one amazing stuff that's my we, we didn't even talk about his catches yesterday he had two great catches in the outfield yeah I mean, oh yeah the, he's just he's he looks he looks great out there again it was a weird save for, save for a couple mistakes from santander the outfield like really good so far this year mullins a couple really nice catches out there too yep he and when he does it, he gets super low and like he he like I don't know the way he catches it he's he's ready to lay out at any time. Again his um his his um his bat hasn't really quite again he's walking a little more he's hard but they're just not falling yet. Um, but yeah his defense has been great again all the outfielders I think they were my third star in the Pittsburgh series it was just the outfielders the, the defense so. Again, once we can kind of get everybody rolling again and on the same page, Adley will start hitting. It's funny where like Adley isn't hitting; he looks awful right now. He's hitting like two seventy six still. His OPS is like under seven hundred, but he's hitting decent. They'll fall for him. Gunner, they're gonna fall. He's hitting the ball way too hard not to. And then again, Jack will come around, and then it's like, all right, pick your poison, have fun with the lineup. Go ahead. Absolutely. So Ben uh, calling out that uh, maybe we'll have a cardiac curse odd call sometime this year. I don't know if that's going to happen. I feel like that would be that would be a, a Tom Brenneman call if anyone. Ben Ben is the originator of the Dong Bong name. He was the first. Yes, we were. We were, we, last we were yeah, we were talking last night, and he told me that uh, when they reissued it, that was the one year anniversary of the very first one. How about yep. that? April tenth. Yep. So happy anniversary to everyone. Love Ben. Seen him out at seen him out at the yard a couple times. He's 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 good people. He's a good egg. He's a good egg. Okay. What's your mustard of the series? Or do you have any other condiments you want to sprinkle in? Um what do they what do they put on their hot I guess Boston doesn't do like like you know, oh you have to put this on a hot dog or you can't put this. Um no, they like no you know what? I think clean and dry as possible. I, I think Jared had told me like they have some bad ketchup. Like they don't have Heinz. It's like some shitty ketchup and everyone hates it. It's something like that. It's either ketchup or like horse or um, a honey mustard where everyone like goes crazy over it. So I'll give my honey mustard of the um, honey mustard of the series. Al Corbin, because he just, he was so good. And he said it was his B minus stuff. And he like gave up two hits in the first, uh, a home run, uh, struck out six, I believe, walked one or two. And then just nobody else touched base the rest of the, the time. So yep. it's uh yeah, Corbin is and again if like he said that's my B minus stuff. If that's his B minus stuff, it's like okay, he was he looked untouchable after the first inning. So he said it took him like twenty five to thirty pitches to get settled in. Um again, there's a quiet terrifying. there's a quiet there's a quiet cockiness with him, which I really like. Like he's just kinda yeah. like he's just kinda struts around and like you know, he's kinda sparing with his words, but he also like, you know, he he's not like being a dick to the media, he's just kinda like saying it like it is. I, I like it. He's got the 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 you know flowing blonde hair which seems to be a prerequisite these days for this club big fan listen if you want to Cy Young you can you can do that and you can talk like that and you know you yeah. can you can kind of do what you want so he's he's like by far the odds on favorite to win this year too I don't know if you've looked recently. Say, he's he's put himself in the conversation already this year I he, mean like he's yeah. number one he's he's the leader there's nobody yeah. else close it's I think the next closest person was like plus eight no they were like plus twelve hundred or something yesterday and it was a scooball I believe from the uh, Tigers. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, it's, that's, that's a pretty good bet. If you're into that kind of stuff. If you're a betting man, you're saying. If you're a betting man. Okay. Some money. What else you got? You got any, got any dogs you want to throw out there? Um, Jordan Westbrook dog gunners, a dog, like the gunner gunner is a dog specifically for hitting that home run. And then just walking like the way he grabs the barrel of the bat and just watched it and walked like, that's just that he's a bad man and he knows it. And, and, God, I pray for these other teams when he really starts to get going. Because again, we've seen the kind of tears that he can go on, and it's it's so much fun to watch as an Orioles fan. It's just he's an absolute weapon out there. Like Spenny says, he's going to murder someone. Hair on fire, Henderson. Like he's just going to steal bases when guys aren't even looking and like trying to make throws and all that. He's just he's an absolute dog. I, I would love nine Gunner Hendersons. 
Yep, absolutely. Dogs, I'd, I'd go relievers uh, for this series. I feel like, you know, they had their their tough moments overall. But like I said, Mike Bauman, he, you know, he settled things down after letting that uh, that kind of loud one, that loud shot out to left field. Mm -hmm. uh, rest of the guys, Kaloum, you mentioned, uh, Kulom, um, as I butchered that four different ways when I was tripping on Dayquil uh, recording the other day. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just I can know, you know, a couple, a couple solid, solid shoves. I mean, it's just like really the expectations with the bullpen right now for me, they're a little out of whack because it's just, it, you feel the absence of Felix Batista, but you know, mm -hmm. Kimberl gets saved last night and he just some, some of these guys, he, it just feels like, it feels like there's something missing. There's some depth missing, something just without King Felix there at the end of things to really settle things down. But Kimberl has been solid and the rest of the guys. I feel like they they know what the mission is right now, and it's just get the get the hell out of the way just as quickly as possible. Yep. And they're they're doing a pretty good job of it. So they're my dogs. Yeah, Ke Keegan Aiken has been awesome. Again, we haven't talked oh, yeah. about it much, but again, just kind of get the outs and get out of there. Like that that's all you need to do. So hopefully that uh, that's what they can keep doing. The milkman's going to keep delivering. That's what I'm just looking at. Uh, I'm just looking at uh, Big Ben's uh, Big Ben's Twitter. He loves the. Uh, he loves the uh, what's it called milkman uh, call. And here we go. We we can kind of head it, head out on this one. Tim Barbalace. The Orioles have scored 23 runs since bringing back the Dong Bong and the Sprinklers. They scored 23 runs in the prior seven games combined. So baseball, so baseball, so fucking stupid. Like it, so it's weird. so it's so mental. It's just so like you can like you know. And obviously, talent has a lot to do with this. But like they have the talent, and they weren't producing. And then they bring back this good vibes thing, and all of a sudden they're they're just hitting the cover off the ball. It's it's so stupid. It's it's a great sport. It's so much fun, and uh, that's that's you know really encapsulated by that. Love the dong bong. Welcome back. It makes no sense that something like that like works. You know, like it shouldn't. It shouldn't. There's that, that, grown men, grown men at their job who were not performing that well, and then somebody brought in a funnel and a hose, and they were drinking water out of it, and now yeah. everyone's having the time of their life. Like that's literally what it boils down to. That's the game. That's I am the, the fucking game, pal. Here we go. <laughs> Tweet from Jared Carabas. I don't know what the Red Sox did to Colton Kowser, but somebody better apologize before the Orioles come back to Fenway Park immediately. <laughs> yeah. That's he's, great. He's, the, he's, their, he's their new boogeyman. He's their new Anton Shiger. He's Rasputin yeah. up in Boston. He's going to – He's gonna. a lot of people, a lot of Boston fans are going to have nightmares about a guy named Colton. <laughs> As, they as, as as Mike Elias would would ordain next time your next thing you know uh some sort of Caden or Braden or Cadence is going to be coming up there and knocking on the doors like the Grim Reaper on the meme. Soon we'll have to make that meme. Oh, that'll be a good one. There we go. Listen, the, the content brains are just they're working. You had the idea for the uh, sometimes you got to go back to move forward video. I got to got to shout you out for that. I only I only think in in memes and and Matthew McConaughey like what can we what can we make out of this so I like it cannot be stressed enough how ridiculous and utterly insane it is if that's a car commercial <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> for like Lincoln's too like not yeah. not like like I don't I don't think I've ever known anyone who's driven a Lincoln like who's owned no a literally like Tony Soprano who has the line of like back when I drove like, like he fixed my Lincoln back when I drove Lincoln's that's the one person I know who's ever driven a lincoln sterling is asking for a review of the fallout pilot i binged the whole thing amazing really really loved it so for anyone on the fence or fallout curious i i'd go ahead and watch that on amazon prime i saw your tweets about that i had no clue what you were talking about no you're uh you're not a video game guy um I am, you're, you're, I'm, I'm whoa i'm a video game guy you're you're a retro video game guy and a sports video game guy i play the show i play mlb the show yeah, exactly. You give give fall you give fall out a chance to earn your business. I, I think, you think like no, that was Bioshock. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bioshock. Bioshock's kind of similar. It's very yeah. Good. I remember that game when it came out. My buddy didn't Ed McDaniel would play it, and we we would gather around and watch him play it. But, Bioshock's sick. That could be another good TV show. Yeah, that could be fun. Yeah. Then they they came out with a second one a couple years ago, right? Yeah. So they had uh, the one. The first one is set in like an underwater city, and then they had Bioshock Infinite, which is set in like a floating city in like 1912. It's so Ooh. fucking weird. It's it's amazing. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I can't get I, those shows. Don't do it for me, but I can. I'll, I'll maybe maybe one of these nights I'll try and dive in. Yeah, give it a shot. It, the The world is very. It's very. It might take some like digging, or maybe watch a quick video to explain what's going on because it's like an alternate history, but it's in the future, and it, just a, a lot going on with it. But very, very cool and fun. And Walton Goggins is 
just an awesome actor. And I like plays, him. He plays a, a really, really cool role in it. So he's a beast. Okay. That all we got. Same time, uh, same time tomorrow. Pickles. Are you going? Yeah. We're yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll be there. I'm, uh, I'm probably just going to, yeah, I think I'll log right out and then Uber right down and we'll, uh, we'll meet up there and, um, big Mike's going to be in the house. He's probably coming right from work. So let's do it. Let's do it. Should be a fun weekend. Should. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think that is all we got on this series. A, a great series. The series we were waiting for. I'll say it. You know, yeah. they won a couple series. They lost one for the first time in a while to the Pirates. Uh, the vibes were, I, I wouldn't say they were bad, but they were just a little bit off. And this this kind of feels like a vibe resetting. They're going to be back in the house tomorrow night. Jackson Holiday making his camping yards with the, the debut. Uh, going to be amazing. And shout out to Tim Apple and all the boys making things happen for that debut to, uh, you know, happen on Apple TV Plus. So if you don't have that, go ahead and get your subscription or your free trial because uh, you're going to have to watch on that if you're not fortunate enough to make it out to Camden Yards with us. But uh, that's enough uh, shilling for Apple. Thank you guys, as always, for listening, as I'll shill for us real quick. Uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe to our YouTube if you're not already. We're recapping each and every single one of these series uh, as they go along. So I'm going live every couple of nights to uh, talk some Orioles. We talk Ravens as well once a week. Uh, and then we do recaps uh, during Raven seasons as well. So if you're into that, go ahead and hit that, hit that subscribe button, get yourself ready. Uh, maybe doing some fun stuff around the NFL draft coming up too. So uh, like I said, and I'll say it again, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and uh, comment under the video to get the algorithm pump and get us uh, into more people's suggested box. Follow us on social media at Exit52Podcast across the board. That is Twitter or X. Uh, uh, Instagram at X 52 podcast, TikTok, all that good stuff. I am at Jake Luke. That's L O U Q U E. Eric is at E D I T T I 22. Brian is at Barstool Banks. Taylor at Taylor Smythe 10. And Spenny, who you saw a little bit of down in Delray mm -hmm. Beach, just, you know, shimmying and shaking around, drinking a couple, you know, pina coladas, just living the, living the good life down there. Love that for Spenny, uh, is at Ravens for Dummies. Thank you guys again, and we will talk to you very, very soon.